This is a smaller, tight-knit group of individuals that really represent the country. It doesn't matter what age you are, if you're willing to win, you're willing to put your best effort. It's not how hard you get hit. I ended up fracturing my thumb. They suspected that he had Crohn's. It's how hard you get hit and get knocked down and get up again. We don't take days off. That's right, strength, no weakness. This guy's kind of the limit. Get ready, because today we're taking a look at some of the biggest names in baseball. From top rookies to the established pro, gear up, because this is no days off. See, my goal is not to create a better baseball player, but it's to create a superhuman that just happens to play baseball. Looking back at my time in Philly, just having a little bit of time to reflect, uh, you know, there was, there was definitely good times, there were some bad times and whatnot. But, you know, I try to just look back on all the good uh, that was able to take place, all the success that we had. You know, obviously, winning a World Series, uh, that, that's, that's, that's number one. I mean, man, there were so many great moments. Um, had a big hit in Colorado. Colorado had uh, made their way into the playoffs and swept us in three games, so it was, it was nice to return the favor, knocking those guys out. It was a great time. Spent you know, 12 years of my life you know, in, in Philadelphia, so it's always going to have a special place in, in my heart. The mindset this year is just to continue to, to train and uh, prepare myself for, uh, for another season. 6.30 start time, it's got to be the first thing I do in the morning. Right now we're just working on getting feel, fluidity, just trying to work on getting bat path. So just kind of feeling my way around, getting my rhythm down. A typical workout for me, uh, I think we probably hit somewhere in the neighborhood about 140, 150 balls, trying to kind of build up the, uh, the endurance a little bit and then the mental focus and sharpness and whatnot. This is the first week starting to hit, so taking everything as a, uh, a work in progress, but so far it feels pretty good. It's a year-round thing, so working out, hitting, all kind of baseball activity, it's just it's year-round, it never, never really stops. Now, you know, I'm done hitting, head back to the house and, uh, and go and uh, get my workout in, which is a little bit different. Uh, got my trainer in, get the body fired up, ready to go. There's still that fire, there's still that passion to want to play, to want to compete in the tank, and, you know, I, I just want to, I want to play until I burn that completely out because I believe that that ability is still there. I believe that I can go out and accomplish great things by putting in the work that I need to put in to, to be able to go out on the field, be able to perform. So, I mean, for me, it's just, I believe it's, it's just a matter of me just going out there and just doing it. I try not to look ahead in the workouts and stuff because y'all might see, I might be all over the place here in the rest. In sports, unfortunately, you know, prior to athletes training, they're told that they need to warm up, right? But the reality is our bodies are already at 98.6 degrees. They're already warm. So what we're doing is activating the muscles that are going to be used during the course of training. Before it was like a workout is a workout is a workout, you know? I don't know, I think it's, I think that's, that's where it all, to me, that's where it all has to start. I think it has to start in the training room before you can go to the weight room to figure everything out. That's terrible, bro. Being here in the moment now, it's... It's bad, but like... You feel good, you feel good after, feel activated. Like you got the work in that you wanted to get in, but like not like overly beat up. So, I mean, it takes a toll, like the whole nervous system and everything is like crazy. We're using gravity, right? And the ability to turn on and change direction to create a greater load that we're moving in less time. I expect amazing things from Ryan. I mean, here's a guy that, you know, over the last year went from 
a home run every 23 at bats, to leading the league with a home run every 13 at bats, to improving his exit velocity by eight to 10 miles per hour, which is equivalent to 60 to 70 feet per ball strike. That's unheard of for a guy his age, and we're only getting better. We haven't even scratched the surface as far as his potential and closing the gap on it. That was deep, that was deep, <laughs> y'all. Um, I mean, you're always gonna have people that doubt you. You're always gonna have people that say, oh, this guy can't do this, or this guy is this, or this. It's easy, it's not, they're, they're not me. Um, you know, I know the amount of work that I put in. I know what it takes for me to do what I need to do. You know, as a guy who went out and just tried to give my all every, every single time out, um, you know, tried to go out there, go play the game the right way, Try to help my team win. Try to do to you know do everything I can do in my power to help my team win. So, you know, hopefully people can remember that. Um, now it's time for me to to to, to look on and, and to move forward to uh, to hopefully a new team. We saw how Ryan Howard trained to get back in the lineup. Up next, we'll see how Rookie of the Year Will Myers trains to be at the top. Let's see how San Diego Padres first baseman Will Myers grinds. It's my pleasure to present the American League Rookie of the Year Award to Will Myers. Touch them all! Right into the legs of Will Myers. We just hope that everybody's all right. 28 home runs, stole 28 bases last year. I don't even think he's uh, scratched the surface of the fullness of his potential. This is a workout that, that is based solely on the, the things that I need to work on. So I like to get there, throw the football around to kind of get warmed up, uh, you know, run a couple routes to, to get my body going. So the speed work is the big thing for me. I'd really like to, I really like having that in my back pocket because it's something that a lot of people don't know that I, I can actually, I'm pretty fast. I can really run. I incorporated it in my game last year with stealing bases. Um, it's something that I've never done before. So I'm really taking my speed work uh, very seriously. I have a pretty high goal of, of going 40-40 this year. For me, I want to set the bar high. You know, it's one of those things that uh, I think there's only been like five people to put up 40-40, but you know, it's something that I think I definitely can achieve. I was 28 and 28 last year with not doing anything in the second half. I would really love to play 162 games next year. I'd really like to finish strong, you know, have two good halves. 2014 and 2015 were, were the two toughest years I've ever went through, especially in baseball. When I was younger, I never dealt with injuries, nothing. I've never never been hurt through a game, and I got hurt, tried to like uh, get it ready and come back and then get hurt again. That happened like three times for me. And Will Myers comes off first base kind of with a grimace on his face, flexing that left hand. To have it taken away, you, you, you kind of get the perspective of, you know, just being able to play this game that you love every single day. I had a great June that really kind of put me on the scene for the All-Star Game and, and being the ambassador. So kind of hit really quickly. It's something that uh, was really cool. The ovation I got from the fans was just something that uh, was really crazy and very surreal. It's, uh, signing Will Myers to a, to a six-year contract. It's the largest commitment, financial commitment in Padre history. Done with the workout now. Headed to go hit at the cage. Uh, do a little tee work today. The offseason's great. It's time to, to reflect on the year and uh, you know kind of go over what, what the improvements you need to make going into the next year. It's tough to, to face a guy like Kershaw or Bumgarner or Cueto or Grinky, those guys in our division, uh, when you're behind in the count. So the thing I want to do is be aggressive early, stay on that fastball. You want to be a free swinger at the pitches you like, and that's what I'm going to do this year. That's, that's my main goal uh, from an offensive standpoint. He lines it in. I learned how to kind of hit and, and kind of carry a lineup. It's something I take a lot of pride in, you know, with a runner in scoring position, getting that guy in or getting that guy over. It's just getting that run home for the team. Before I take a swing on the ball, you know, I want to make sure I feel that I'm ready to hit the fastball. That's the, that's the key to hitting. Uh, that's something that I really want to preach to the, to the hitters on our team is just being ready to hit the fastball. I try to pick a new hobby uh, to do every offseason. Last year I did drumming lessons. I uh, wasn't very good at that, had no musical experience, but this year I went into boxing. It's a lot of fun, it's something different, it's a different athletic motion, but it's something that I've really enjoyed, it's something I think I'm going to continue to do. You know, we're just working on our jabs, our crosses, our combos that we like to do. You know, it's just really good for endurance, it's good for my footwork, it's good for my hands, it gives my, keeps my hands quick and, you know, that's what I'm here for, to, to really improve my game with my hands and my feet. 
I've kind of had to tell them to take it easy on me in the in the uh, boxing classes because those boxers are in great physical condition. You know, their uh, their endurance is is pretty good. It's it's better than most baseball players. So I've had to tell them I need some breaks every now and then. But he's been great. He's accommodated me in every way I, I need, and uh, I've had a lot of fun uh, working with him. It's tough, man. He works hard, but uh, you know that's what you need uh, to get ready for the season. I've never had a backup plan for baseball. You know, growing up, this is all I've ever wanted to do. It's something that uh, for me to make the playoffs in my first year was incredible. I still feel like I'm 18 years old. I don't, I don't feel like an older guy. I've had a lot of ups and downs already in the big leagues, so I, I can really relate to, to any type of player that comes up. For me to, to be able to hopefully lead this team into a, a playoff run, you know, in the next couple years would be, would be great. Being in San Diego is incredible. You know, it's the it's the best city in the country. The weather's perfect. The fans are are, are incredible. Uh, I, I love everything about San Diego. You know, the, the front office is great. Our coaching staff is great. Not just to be a player here, but to be a leader and, and know what it takes to to stick around at the big league level. Nothing will set Will Myers back. After the break, we see why Trey Turner's speed has teams worried when he's up at bat. What does it take to be considered the fastest player in the MLB? Let's see how Trey Turner spends a day keeping his speed at the top of his game. If I'm the fastest person in baseball, cool. If I'm not, so be it. I'm going to try to, you know, take those extra bases and um, steal as many bags as I can for, you know, for my team. Trey Turner's too fast for the Mets. There's no way to get Trey Turner. Turner running. He's going to steal third without a throw. Here goes Turner. It's a three-bagger for Trey Turner, the burner. This kid ain't going nowhere. I'll tell you that right now. For a right-handed hitter, average time from home to first is 4.3. Above average, 4.2. Flying is 4.0. Trey Turner just ran a 3-4 to first on this ground ball to second. 3-4. It's very nice having you know the speed for um, all aspects of the game: playing defense, make up speed, um, getting the balls other guys don't don't get to, or even beating out a ground ball. You know, I think that's you know a confidence booster. You're on base and, and you're uh, you know in the game. Speed around the bases and speed in the outfield. It's actually been a lot different than when I came here, and that was only two years ago or so. You know, pretty cool to see just things change. He already had baseball skills. The electric part of his game, as far as the speed and explosiveness, came later. But here at NC State, they told me to just run as much as I could. Base team is just like anything else. Defense, offense, it's it's confidence. Coming into the you know basketball gym to uh, condition. Doing broad jumps, a little some explosive stuff, some a little bit more plyometrics, some ladder work, and then some sprint work. I think speed's always you know huge for me. It's just a matter of um, using it each and every time I can. The weight room I think is um, very useful, but you could also use it in the wrong way. Being healthy, you know, I think is the thing I've learned. You can play tired, it's hard to play, you know, injured. Most of the time in the later in the season, your legs start to go a little bit, you know, you feel weaker, especially in your legs, so. Um, do like sled pulls and sled pushes. You have to be explosive at any, you know, at any given time, whether it's, you know, zero to 100 really, really quick. And um, so a lot of times when we train, we do, you know, plyometrics and stuff like that. And that's kind of what I was focused on there, trying to be explosive. I'm a little hard-headed when it comes to the speed because, you know, as a speed guy, you can bunt. I, I don't like to bunt. I like to, <laughs> to hit the ball because if I get out bunting, I, I just felt like, you know, I could have hit that pitch for a double or whatever it may be. So I'm pretty stubborn with the bunt. Even with the speed he has, you know, he can hit, you guys have seen it, he can hit doubles and home runs and he's got real bat speed. You know, I don't, I'm not trying to hit 500-foot home runs every hit back because that's not, that's not my game. That's not how I help out my team. In the cage, I'm very particular what I want because it only gets harder in the game. So if I'm swinging at bad pitches in the cage, and I'm gonna swing at even worse pitches in the game, if I'm popping up in the cage, I'm gonna either pop it even worse or swing and miss in the game. So I'm um, very um, particular in what I look for, and um, I'm very hard on myself because you know I, I like to practice and try to be perfect. And if I'm not, and then hopefully I fall somewhere close to that, so I can uh, you know have success and. and and enjoy that. I always pride myself in being a good hitter and you know being a tough out. 
but um, you know, as a speed guy, they're going to throw strikes to you. They don't want to, um, you know, walk you. So, you know, I, I see what they're doing to me, and um, you know, I decide how I want to attack. If I want to be aggressive and swing at the first pitch, or if I want to see something, and that's what I'm going to try to do is try to be in a good position to um, hit the pitch I want to hit, and then. Um, if I walk, I walk. If I don't, I don't. But hopefully, you know, I get on base to you know, score runs. And he is screaming toward third. How fun is Trey Turner when he turns on the burners? <laughs> I was a little surprised about, you know, the success I had just because playing against guys that, you know, played so much more baseball than me. It's tough going out there every single day and having to compete um, because if you're not prepared every day, then, you know, they'll get to you. And you can learn a lot from watching other guys, and especially Bryce, because this game's not easy. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter if you won the MVP in the, you know, the previous year, that they're still going to attack you. They're still going to, um, you know, try to get you out and do whatever they can to do that. So it just reassures me that I need to be competitive each and every at bat because nobody's going to hand you anything. You need to, you know, always be prepared. Um, you can't get lazy or else you miss that one opportunity that they give you and you need to take advantage of those. And Trey Turner is the fourth national with 30 steals in a season. When you do stuff like, you know, as a little kid, play basketball, play different sports, do different things, you, you learn some athleticism. And so I try to do a little bit of both. I try to, you know, specialize, but at the same time I try to use my athleticism because I think that's, you know, a benefit of mine. I mean, he can be a sore loser occasionally, but he usually doesn't lose, so I don't think he has to worry about that too often. But no, he, it's, fun to, it's fun to play with him. Friends are, you know, what makes anything special. Uh, I still keep in touch with, you know, guys close to, from, um, guys I'm close with in Florida. And I think, you know, that, that makes the day more enjoyable. Um, not to say that playing baseball for a living isn't fun. It's obviously very fun, but, you know, I think what makes it even more fun is, you know, those moments you have with guys, the jokes you have in the clubhouse or in the weight room. And um, I, I enjoy hanging out with those guys, and, and um, we do it every day, you know, and it's hard to do something every single day and not have fun, so we, we try to make the most of it. Great character and makeup, and, and it's the kind of guy you want in your clubhouse, there's no doubt about it. Normal guy, normal kid, and, and just try to have fun. And, you know, I, I look like a baby, so a lot of times, you know, nobody even recognizes me. I go all over the place, and uh, it, do, it doesn't matter. So, I, but that's how I'd like it to be, just, you know, under the radar and, and, and casual. Up next, we check out how Tyler Naquin plans to return to the World Series. He had a phenomenal rookie season. Let's see how Tyler Naquin stays physically and mentally strong through the ups and downs. I first started playing when I was, I want to say like four. And I'd go to the creek and I'd just hit rocks because all the rocks were washed out and they were perfect circles. So it was just, I just keep hitting them, hitting them. Tyler Naquin. You gotta love Naquin. Tyler Naquin, who was the 15th overall pick in the 2012 draft. The rookie Naquin delivers. Tyler Naquin. He's doing the Naquin. When I look back at my rookie season, man, it was almost a blur. The first round of playoffs will win it. And the Indians are headed to the American League Championship Series. Second round of playoffs. The Cleveland Indians are going to the World Series. And then to be able to go to the World Series, come that close. You know. In the air to center, Nate went to his left. Chisholm home, neither one gets it. One run score. You know, things are going to happen. It's just things like that can't happen at times like that. And, you know, me being the center fielder, there's a miscommunication, you know, you can't hear anybody. It was a miscue, for sure. But, you know, I'm gonna learn from that, just get better. As Lonnie was kind of pulling off, Naquin was yelling, it's yours, you got it. And there is pretty loud, anyway. During game seven, which was tough for him, um, and not because he was disappointed that he that he wasn't starting that day. He was disappointed that he wasn't gonna be able to help the team, um, you know, from the get go in that game. It's easy to say stuff from your couch at home. It's easy to do that, but unless your your feet are on the dirt and the grass, you have no idea because this game is so mental. As long as you keep working and doing the same thing, you keep believing in you. You just help contribute any way you can, whether it's a walk in the ninth or a home run in the ninth. You know, you got to be able to help the team win because that's all that matters. He's a tireless worker. He's here at 7.30, 8.30 in the morning every day, and then he's not gone until, you know, 3 or 4 in the afternoon. So, and he's, that's not just eyewash. I mean, he's working the whole time. Working on some running for him, because uh, you know, I can run, but, you know, there's always, there's always room to improve, no matter where you're at. Like one leg starts and stuff like that, those were yesterday. 
a lot of like, you know, some hurdle things. A lot of I remember looking up and seeing that, seeing that banner and I was like, man, I was like, that's so true. <laughs> and then dude, I walked in when I got back from Cleveland, like, you know, two or three, three months ago and I was like, oh my God, that thing is still there. And it just like, it's almost like it's got eyes looking on you, bro. Cause if, if I'm in there like doing my hip stuff, I hate doing mobility stuff. And I was just like, I'm getting tired and I'm just like, Okay, like this, this freaking banner's watching me, bro. He comes back here and is around our guys and treats them just as if they were his teammate currently. I mean, this is an amazing facility. This is, this is nicer than some big league places. When I get in the weight room, I love to blare some techno music. So that and Kid Rock, those are my two go-tos. So anytime that I come home in the off season and the guys haven't seen me, they'll come look down there like, yeah, I knew he was in there because they call it Club Naquin because I always get it going. And, they seem to like it, so I just try to get everybody going. It's enjoyable to be around this place, around those good players, and then you know the staff here, all the way from the guys that help in the clubhouse, the bullpen catchers, to, to Rob Childers. One that really sticks out is just, it's kind of selfish, but robbing a home run when Waka was pitching off Max Muncy, and I played against him in the A's this year. I'm just kind of laugh about it or whatever, but uh, there's there were so many games played here and big games played here, you know, and I was able to you know get a couple rings here and um, win some championships. The home runs, I always thought they would come, and people are going to say you're lying, but I always thought they would because he makes consistent hard contact, and if you can do that, you've got a shot to hit home runs. I remember when I hit it, I knew I didn't catch it flush. I was like, if that ball kicks back, I was like, there is nobody within range of this baseball. And all of a sudden, Sarvi at third base was just, and everybody in the dugout was just jumping over and ready to go. And I was like, this is gonna happen. How cool would it be to like, be a rock star and like just rock down the house one time. And I was like, okay, well, right as I'm around in third base, I was like, I'm gonna be safe. And this is my time to rock down the stage. So when I slid, I went <laughs> just, no hesitation, just went straight into it. And that's how that came. You're never going to hit in the big leagues. You're never going to be a great player in the big leagues if you don't have, um, you know, the ability to overcome issues. You got to be on the field to be able to contribute. That's the bottom line. So taking care of your body is just as big as hitting a double in the bottom of the ninth to win the game. I mean, that, that contributes to that. People always like to look at the athlete after they've had a good first year and they want to see him do terrible so they have something to talk about. So it's just like, I don't think in baseball there's really a day off just because the men, on the mental side of it, obviously. But you gotta take some time for your body, for sure. Keep working hard, but realize it's a game, but it's a job, but it's a fun job, and it's a fun game. Today we saw how four baseball pros work and grind to be at the top level. From overcoming injuries and hardships, to keeping their bodies in top shape, these four players show what it means to live by no days off. Oh, 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 oh,